I think we're live. I think so, too. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Beastly Thoughts Show live. we got a lot of news to talk about today. We're going to start off with uh, what you've been playing. All three of us are going to go over what you've been playing. And at the end of the show, we also want to take some questions from the chat. So if you guys have any questions, write them down in the chat. Uh, I'll talk about that again later, give you guys another heads up. But we will be doing that today, so make sure you're in the chat. Uh, with your questions. So, what have you guys been playing? What, what's going on? Beastly, how you been, man? Long time no see. Well, yeah, it's been, it's I heard been you 14. were uh, saving babies from alligators down in Florida last week. Yeah, go? yeah, I didn't get that far. Actually, the baby stopped jumping into the pool right around southern Georgia. So, I made it back up here. Um, I've been playing a lot of video games, actually. I've been playing my PlayStation Vita, believe it or not. I haven't played that thing in months. Mm -hmm. do, do, have you guys have that, ever have that moment where you sit back and you realize you got a lot of shit that you don't touch? So yeah. I went back into my Vita, and yeah. I started going through and downloading some of these games that I had for PlayStation Plus. Been playing some Muramasa. I pulled out my Wii U. I got family down here from Ohio right now. Oh. And uh, they thought that they were good at Smash Brothers. So I got uh, the whole crew together and uh, destroyed everybody. Uh, been playing some Last of Us, playing some Destiny. I've uh, been really enjoying that. Spent about an hour or two on The Witcher. Uh but I feel myself slowly driven away from that. I, I think the most enjoyment I'm getting out of the games that I'm playing right now are uh, I play State of Decay. I had a really good week, but I've been having a lot of fun with Destiny. Uh, uh, Prison what are you of up Elders. to in Destiny right now? Kate and I did two Prison of Elders, and I, I finally tried. Uh, <laughs> I, I got into Osiris, and uh, we got just completely ah. destroyed, and we ran away. So that was just a one-trial type situation. <laughs> we went there to see what it was like because there's some things in there that I actually need in order to ascend my weapons and my gear. Uh, and uh, I just didn't have an opportunity, didn't have a good enough team. And, of course, whenever we die that quickly, my wife gets pissed off when we back out. <laughs> uh, but uh, we do, we, we try to do the Prison of Elders a few times every week. We go through and do all the wolf missions. Have you done uh, level 35 Skolas yet? Hell no. No? No, the first... <laughs> Farthest I've ever been is 32. I went through 32 with you and 32 with Robbie. And even Robbie said, this 32 is fucking hard. <laughs> it was. It, it was, was tough. insanely hard. And, and Who right was now, the boss? Say what? Who was the boss? Uh, it was the eye, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was the eye. Because the, next, the eye of Kodron? Yeah, remember yeah, you were on sure one was. side, we were on the other side, Kate and I were on the other side, and... You were across the map, taking them out by yourself, and we were basically trying to, you know, uh, maneuver on the other side. Oh, oh, the yeah. fallen guy, the big, yeah. the big, the big, uh, ball, the big eyeball. Yeah. And I think we fought the same boss with Robbie, and um, it was very, very hard. But yeah, I had a really good week. Played a lot of video games. I've been putting in a lot of effort uh, in this YouTube thing these last couple of days. I'm gonna have some good announcements on my channel for some of my subscribers, so you guys stay tuned for that. Branching off into other directions. But yeah, it's been a great week. What have you guys been up to? Awesome. So this week I've been playing Destiny. I have been playing a lot of Crucible. I've been playing a lot of the uh, Vanguard Dragon playlist because I really want to get that Hopscotch Pilgrim. Everybody yeah. is talking about that. Have you that. got it? No, I want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so random, right? Like, you have to get a legendary primary engram, and then out of all the guns it can be, you have to get a Hopscotch Pilgrim. Like, that chance is just so small. I've been running so many strikes, but no luck. I wish I could get into the Prison of Elders, but I just can't because the rewards just aren't worth it. I have like seven treasure keys, but I just don't feel like running it because there's just no point. I've also been playing Halo Master Chief Collection, but playing a lot of classic Halo 2 multiplayer. Love it, love it, love it. And we're playing Minecraft with some friends too. Been having a ton of fun. So that's been about it. Right that's a nice change there, Robbie. Uh, Xbox One. I've been playing it on. Uh, I was going to ask, actually ask you guys if uh, either one of you had played the, My the Windows 10 version of Minecraft. Neither one no. of you had? No, no. Is it different? Uh, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've heard it's pretty much exactly the same. Like, it's uh, not any different. I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2, uh, guys. Uh, Trials of Osiris. I'll tell you this, Beastly, is uh, Trials of Osiris is getting more difficult as time goes on because I feel like the casual players who, you know, formed the team and just tried to hop in, you know, week one, two, and three, they were in there. But now it's kind of like, it's just the hardcore guys, you know? Like, uh, there's an app that I use. I think it's called, like, uh, I don't know, Trial something. I, I can't remember what it's called. But it basically show you can type in like, the gamer tag of one of your opponents, and it shows you the whole team, what they're using. 
And I rarely come up against a team that doesn't have three players that all have gone to the lighthouse. Uh, so it's it's definitely getting more difficult in the Trials of Osiris. Um, but the rewards are significantly better than just about anything else. You know, the you can still get better weapons, I think, out of Vault of Glass and arguably Crota's End. Uh, but some of the stuff you could... Like, you can only get a solar hand cannon if you do Trials of Osiris and go to the lighthouse. That's the only way yeah. to get it. And that's, that's true. A, you know, that's a very good weapon to have, but it's very difficult to get. I would say it's more difficult than running uh, hard mode Vault of Glass or a Crota's End. Especially wow. getting a solar jewel even versus, like, an arc or a void, because to get that one specifically, like, yeah, it's very tough to... Yeah, that's another good on. point, Robbie, is that they're randomized. So even if you're... First of all, you've got a... You've got all the different weapon types that could drop, right? You've got the, the auto rifle, the summoner. You've got the scholar, which is the uh, scout rifle. you got all the different weapons that could drop. But if you're waiting for just one type of elemental burn off of one type of weapon, you know, it could take you quite a while to get it, you know. And that was my uh, white whale was the solar hand cannon, right? Because I'd already got... The Word of Crota, which is the Void hand cannon. I've already got the uh, Fate Bringer, which is the Arc hand damage. cannon. So I wanted that Solar hand cannon, and uh, I finally got it. And now, I'll be honest with you, my drive to compete in the Trials of Osiris has gone way down. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, you know, because it's such a stressful thing. Well, it, you, it's not like a raid where it gets easier as you learn it. It's hard every time you do it, you know? Well, well hearing this a bit of information from you has kind of uh, extinguished my fire for Trials of Osiris now because getting those treasure keys has been really hard. You know, every week you get the um, House of Wolf bounties. You go out there, you do all six of them, you come back, you turn them in, and you hope hope for... Well, the uh, treasure keys case. are only for the prison elders. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, okay. So that's, I'm going to get around to Trials of Osiris. I've been doing that every week and hoping for treasure keys. And like yesterday, Kate and I, we did it, and I got one treasure key for turning in all six bounties. I was like, "What the hell?" Mm -hmm. and, and it becomes so random. And uh, I want to get this new stuff, but hearing you say it, it's even harder than it's been. It was extremely hard yesterday, and if it's harder than that, just well, I, I was. Well, the trials of Osiris is getting harder. That's what I'm Where's talking about. The elders. Is I'm it? talking about trials. I'm talking okay. about trials of Osiris. When we went in there. Okay. It was extremely difficult. And, and I know that you are a premium player in this game, Robbie, as well. Uh, and to hear you say that, and I know I was probably going up against regular dudes who've been through it on numerous occasions, I just felt like a deer in the headlights. And the, the fact that it's getting harder and harder makes me want to, oh, God, either level up another way or just get in there and brave that storm and get better at it. Yeah, I think the, the best way, you know, if, if you're motivated to actually do it, I think the best way is to uh, get into the elimination playlist, get into some of the three-man team playlists. Get used to uh, get used to the metagame of resin your teammates, uh, bringing in a high-powered sniper rifle or a shotgun, getting used to killing people as they res, uh, getting used to the maps that those game types are on because they're similar to, you know, Burning Shrine, uh, you know, all those maps that are in the Trials of Osiris, you really got to know them well because your, your, your opponents do, right? They've played them multiple times now. We've gone through the rotation. And then last weekend, they did the ro whole rotation in one week. It's, you know, it takes a lot of learning. It's Right now, it's the pinnacle of PvP in Destiny. And it's yeah. probably going to stay that way, you know. it's. I've never seen anything quite like it in video games, where they, they so strongly reward PvP, but you... It's so performance based, you know. In most games, win or lose, you get a little something. Even in Iron Banner, in uh, Destiny, even in the Iron Banner, you get a little something. Win or lose, you get something. Yep. And this man, if you lose, you're done. See ya. You have to be performing like constantly in trials. If you're not performing, if you're not doing your very best, you're gonna get your ass whooped. There's no way you're making it to lighthouse. I still haven't made it to lighthouse, and I was even um, on the Planet Destiny stream a few weeks ago with your friend Tefty and Holtzman from Planet Destiny. We still couldn't make it. So really, I don't know. I, j I just can't do it. Well, <sighs> players. <laughs> and they, well, they were off their game. Like we were all struggling. So yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty good at Crucible, but I'm not great at trials. I just was struggling. 
teamwork is key in that too. And uh, jumping in with a team that you're not familiar with is going to mess things up. You know, like uh, I go in there with a team that I'm pretty familiar with every week. So a lot of the time, like if I go in with Skinny, one of my teammates, and Loon, another one of my teammates, I know my my play style is to kind of hang back more. I know that's full blown Loon's play style as well, but Skinny's much more aggressive. So Skinny's going to go in there. He might be the first to die, but he'll also often get that first kill. And me and Full Blown Loon kind of know that. We know his flank roots. We know where to res him if he goes down, but we also know the flank roots where Skinny, you know, if Skinny's going around in a flank, we know to push up from the front, you know? So, like, learning all that stuff for each map takes a long time, and learning how your teammates are going to play takes a while, too. Mm. Anybody download Journey? Yes, I did. I actually played it for the first time. Man, I love that game. Wow. The first time, I never, really? I never played it on PS3. I heard amazing things about it. I was looking forward to it. Such an enjoyable experience. I sat down, I think it was like at 9 at night. I played it till about 11, just quietly with my headphones on. Everything around me just kind of phased out. What a wonderful experience. I yeah, really it's, enjoyed it's it. Play, with, did you finish it in that two hours? Yeah, I played with one guy. We went the whole way through, and I obviously oh, really? had no idea who he was. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that game Love has it. a very strong emotional resonance, man. It's one of those games that doesn't have a narrative, really, but when you get through with it and you, it kind of be- becomes an epiphany moment where you realize what, what the hell you just went through, and it's a it's very so emotional powerful. and draining situation, yeah. And it's so powerful, too, With even though there's so little there. Like, there's no narrative, there's no real story, but you just you feel something. You feel so much, even though there really isn't much going on at all, but you just... It's, yeah, a story, it's, it's a story of death and life for people who, who played it. You'll understand what that means. Um, I love the game. I haven't seen it on PS4. Briar, you have it. Uh, you did say, right? Yes. Does, I have it, it on the it, PS3. I haven't bought it on the PS4. I think I actually get it for free on the PS4. It is like, free. Yeah, if you already own it, it's yeah, free. Okay, well, wow. I can get it for free then. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, uh, th- also, is... I've been laughing hysterically still every time I boot up Rocket League. That game is that's what I was about to ask. Okay. Fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it's just, I, I was, there's I was, no better words to explain how fucking awesome that game is. <laughs> I was just going to say that right when you said it. I said nobody mentioned Rocket League, and it's not because I haven't played it. I've honestly played Rocket League every single day for the since I think since the day that I first played it. Mm-hmm. Every day, Kate and I play it. It doesn't matter if it's for 20 minutes or an hour and a half. We play it every single day. It's kind of a routine. You yeah. have to get in there and play it. It's that good. It's All right, so, so good. do you play as a team, like the two of you, two-player? We play the two of us with two other randoms or with one other like random. Like in chaos mode, four-man teams? Yeah, we love chaos mode. Oh, man, shit. Man. I hate chaos mode. <laughs> well, we, we kind of got really in the swing of things playing with Hector, uh, uh-huh. and we play, we play with Robbie as well. Uh, and when someone sits back and is actually goalie, it makes things a little bit more controlled. Mm-hmm. And Hector was goalie, and then I took over as goalie, and I really liked it. And so yeah, that's playing kinda... goalie is fun. Like when you play with randoms, nobody ever seems to play goalie. But if you play with your friends and actually like start forming strategy, strategies can work in that game. They and, work very uh, definitely well. Definitely, defense is a strong strategy. <laughs> Yeah, it, it takes a while for you to really articulate well what your car is going to do, especially when you see the ball bouncing really high and yeah. you're at that moment where you're underneath it and you may be going reverse to try to catch it. Mm-hmm. It takes a while for you to really articulate well what your car does. But I'm almost to the point now where if the ball is flying through the air, I can jump and then double jump, spin and hit the ball the other direction and do things a lot of people can't do. I love that game. a long time to realize wait on the double jump. Don't just yeah. tap, tap. It's tap. Tap, tap, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, and then just gonna spin. Or and tap, tap, and then boost. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know that the game is surprisingly deep. When you first boot it up, it's like this game is fucking stupid fun. But then as you play, you're like, wait a minute, there's more to this game than you know it's, initially. If you, if you're just getting started, make sure you do the tutor- tutorials, the, especially to. the advanced one, because the you have to learn um, some of those moves. You have to start practicing them so that you'll get better at the game. But it is just a blast. I, I laugh hysterically almost the entire time I play it. <laughs> I want to I want to play with you because your laugh makes me laugh. All right. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I want to uh, say one thing about it. It took me a while to actually get used to using square as a break. Mm-hmm. Square, you'll turn around a lot faster than you would just turning. And for maybe the first... 
four or five, six days of playing that game. It's been two weeks now, but I never used it. And once you get used to using that, man, it makes a world of difference in that game. Rocket League is amazing. Yeah. Do you guys know the story of how he created that game? No. The, the guy who created the game actually created an Unreal Tournament mod years ago that uh, took the players out of the game and put cars in it. And basically he made this game in Unreal Tournament as a mod. And he really liked it. And he thought, well, what if I can try to make this into a real thing? And he did it, and it works. So it, does it draws it's inspiration from Unreal Tournament. It's an awesome game. Probably my favorite uh, PlayStation Plus game I've gotten so far. I don't I think I've played it. One more I don't question think I've I got. Any of them that much. Before we move on, I, I want to ask you: How come? What's going on with The Witcher? How come that game's not sucking you in? I don't. I don't know. It's it's one of those situations, Briar. Uh, my wife has a lot more time than I do to mm-hmm. be at home. She's a stay-at-home wife, a, a, a mother. She goes to, to school from home, so she has a lot of time on her hands at home. And me, when I come home, I want to get into something that it, that it won't require so much of me. RPGs at this stage of, of, of my gameplay life are really hard for me to commit to. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's a game that I really, really think I'm going to go nuts over, like Final Fantasy VII, yeah, I will totally commit. But when I've got games that I, I can play for 20 minutes or half an hour, or if I can go to the Prison of Elders for 30 minutes and get a, a nice experience out of that and possibly get some good loot versus spend that 30 minutes in The Witcher and possibly you know do something amazing and possibly not to, to push the story forward, and play it on you know unspecified increments of time. I'd rather be able to play something, get in there and play Call of Duty, get in there and play The Last of Us, get in there and play uh, Rocket Rocket League. You know, get in there and play something as a short, 10, 20, 30 minute period of time because I don't have all that time anymore. I got when I walk in the door, I got four kids to say, Dad, 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 Dad. I'm like, Holy shit! You know, I, I got my wife who who requires time. I've got things to do around the house and cleaning cars and do all this stuff. So. It, it's not that the game is not amazing. I still stand by the the fact that it is. The Witcher, especially if you're a college student here at home, you can play that game and spend hundreds of hours. I'm still only level 12. Mm-hmm. It's like 25. I've already let it go. You know, so one of these just, days, maybe it's just a matter of time. Then it's not. That's that's totally it. Totally yeah. it. it okay. Right now, if I'm sitting at home and and I want to play a game, I'm going to play something I can play for 20 minutes that won't require me to fully you know, dump all my effort into it and, and submerge myself fully. I wish I could, but it's really hard, especially when we're constantly getting new games. It's really hard to do that. It, you know... <laughs> that's why you got, I don't even want to talk do. about my pile of shame over yeah, here. <laughs> you got a pile. I know you do. You're, you're a fault. What is it? Um, damn it, damn it. What game do you have that's still in the cellophane? I, I Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4. Yes, all right. me right out. Like, no yeah, problem. Yeah, nope. still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always ready to play on that one. Like, when are you going to start Far Cry? When are you going to start Far Cry? Oh, so. that's it. I almost forgot. Robbie and I played uh, Crow to Zen together this weekend. Or this week. Yes, we did on wow. stream. It was a lot of fun. I loved it. Yeah, we wow. were doing the uh, Planet Destiny uh, stream. And uh, it, it was a rough... I, I'll tell you this. It was the longest, vault, or longest Crow to Zen run I've had... In a while, uh, it was Me too. I think two hours. We're running total. through new guys. Really? Yeah, was it was because you're rusty. No, it was it was because we were we were in a group of inexperienced people. Um, you know, I just opened up the party uh, to the stream, and I usually get kind of a fifty fifty mix of like people who have done it a ton and people who have never done it before. And the people who are who've done it a ton kind of take care of the people who've done who've never done it, while yeah. I'm kind of interacting with the chat. Mm-hmm. This time, that was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much all noobs, except for Briar and I. Like, yeah, it was, it was all noobs. Uh, and, I mean, if anybody's familiar with the, the bridge crossing section with the totems, yeah, we had probably four wipes because people were just standing on the wrong totems and stuff like that. You know? We had to tell them, like, get off, get off, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna die, <laughs> so so. Finally, I just like crossed the bridge, and I said, okay, everybody jump off, and I'll solo this section. Let's move the fuck on. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, I'm trying to like interact with chat. And, like, <laughs> it was too much. It was, too much. It, was it was a lot of fun, though. It ended up being super rewarding, though. Uh, it ended up being like crazy fun, like after it was all said and done, because it was so intense. It cool. was a lot of fun. If you guys want to do a raid sometime, let me know. It's been Briar. I think the last time I did a raid, I was with you. Oh, okay. Because we're gonna have a party of six, and I never have that many people with me in Destiny. It's just me and Kate. All right, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not saying no to a raid, but this gives me a good opportunity to bring up LFG sites. Um, oh, yeah. People who are in love with Destiny, but their main complaint is I don't have I don't have that many pr- friends who play it. I don't have like I can't get through Nightfalls because I don't have enough friends who you know can help me get through it, or I can't do raids because I don't have five friends that play. Check out the LFG sites. Planet Destiny has an LFG site. Uh, Reddit has an LFG site. There's tons of these things out there. The, the 100.io, just go to that website, and you can actually join a 100-person clan that's ready to go. It has a message board. You can meet people. You'll make friends that way. Uh, so that's one of the big things about Destiny is it's so much better with people because you get to... You get to compete in these huge events, these raids, and even doing nightfalls, man. I laugh hysterically when I do nightfalls with my friends. You know, it's They're just super fun. And you said it's 100.io? The 100.io. Gotcha. Okay. And it, you basically get formed. And, in fact, Beastly, I'm a member over there, and I'll send you a link to the to the board that I am a member of. That way we can both be in the same board. Sweet, sweet. Um, but, good. yeah, I mean... <laughs> Off topic, but I just wanted to mention that because it, to me, Destiny is way better when you play it with people, and uh, the more you play it with the yeah. same people, the better friends you become, and and the better you get. Yeah, yeah. and the better you get. I just know, maybe we should move on to news before but, we do. Before we do, can we please have a five-second moment of silence for Windows 8? No. Um, before we <laughs> move on, I want to talk about okay. how uh, we're going to be taking questions at the end of this show, so make sure you leave some questions for us in the chat. Uh, we're going to read those questions out of the chat, and we'll answer them for you at the end of the show. All right, Robbie, hook us up with some news, bro. On to the news. <laughs> so first thing we got in our news today, I don't really have a ton to say about this, but Ouya, ah, Ouya CEO leaves company following Razer acquisition. So Razer, the past weekend, purchased Ouya, the company who obviously made the micro console that came out few years ago. Obviously, it's been having a lot of struggles. It really hasn't sold well, and Razer acquired them. What do you guys think of this? It's going to be probably part of the contract of them getting bought. Is they, can't have, they can't have old management sticking around, so it's yes. probably part of that. I, I agree with that. I'm really intrigued to see what Razer does with this company. I mean, are we talking of you know Razer as far as the phone company? Be, make the yeah, phones? the Razer, the guys that make the mouse, the Nvidia Shield, like that, not the Nvidia Shield, but the you know the the gaming peripheral company. Okay, so they're going yep. to integrate this into their system somehow. Wow. Uh, they're planning on using the the software, you know, like the stuff the stuff that's been under development for Ouya. They want to get a hold of that. They're there's not going to be Ouya hardware anymore. That's, that's yeah. has gone. They'll use that technology and incorporate it into other devices, but they're, the Ouya is probably going to be discontinued at this point. Yeah, they're, they're, they bought this company because of the, the relationships that Ouya has with software developers. The games that we're getting developed for Ouya are now going to become into Razer devices. Okay. Makes sense. I think it's a decent move. I mean, I think it'll work out for them. Well, I think... I think that Briar should be happy now because he actually owns a Ouya. I mean, you got a piece of history, and it's going to disappear real quick. That thing, like, you'd be surprised how much use I get out of my Ouya. <laughs> what really? do you use it for? It's excellent paperweight. Beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful paperweight. And people are always asking. It's a great conversation starter because people are always asking, what the fuck is that thing? I say, oh, that's an Ouya. Like, what? <laughs> it's a great paperweight. It's fucking awesome. crazy. Nobody knows what it is. Made. Oh, my God. <laughs> Right next to the Nokia N-Gage. Capcom apologizes for Street Fighter V beta, postpones next beta test. I have heard that this has been absolutely awful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. I'm glad they apologized. Um, they definitely needed to. Were, were um, you involved in the beta, Brian? No, I couldn't get in. Yeah, uh, Hector was trying to, and I saw him on my PS4. It said Street Fighter V beta. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I sent him a, a private message, and we started a, a party, a chat. And he was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> he said, this thing doesn't work at all. He was so upset about it. Yeah. It, it, Last it week he definitely yeah. it's been like the over. Even if you could get into a match, a lot of times it would just kick you out of the match, and you, you couldn't even play. So yeah. it's the cap for delaying it. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Until, right, Robbie is good point. It's probably good on Capcom for delaying. I think so. I think it shows that they realize, look, we the thing clearly wasn't ready yet, so we'll delay the next beta, and then when it's ready, we'll release it. So moving on, Nintendo TV is shutting down. This is the 
application that came over for the Wii U when it launched. This is basically so you can use your gamepad to control your television. And I think there's some services and apps for it, too. What do you guys think about this? I don't think about it at all. <laughs> Me I neither. never think about it. <laughs> I don't think about the Wii U in general. To in be fact, honest. this is the first time I've ever thought about it. <laughs> I, I Wii U is pretty know. much done. I mean, I didn't. I didn't know the service actually existed. And and up until <laughs> wow. honestly, up until Thursday, I hadn't played my Wii U for probably three months. Me so, too. I haven't touched it in months. So I mean, it's a fun console right to there. play. Once in a while, but the Wii U is definitely winding down, and uh, this shows that that's definitely true. I mean, it has some good games, but as as of right now, I have no need or desire to play it unless people I know come over and request to play Smash Brothers. Other than that, it sits to the wayside. Sorry, Nintendo. Yeah. Same here. My Your Destiny character. Still there. Yeah. Your Destiny character will stay with you for the next ten years, says Bungie. So across every expansion, every game, your guardians that you've created from the very beginning of Destiny will stay with you over the next ten years. Hmm. Well, that that begs a few questions. Are, is the visual aesthetic of Destiny going to stay the same for the next ten years? Are the characters going to go through changes visually over the next ten years, but you know there's the same character? I mean, in ten years, are we still going to be on the PS4 and the Xbox One? No. Probably not. So I'm thinking that uh, the characters will probably evolve as the hardware evolves, as the games evolve, but you'll be able to look and say that's the same character. Kind of the same way that we do now with Nathan Drake. When you look at him now, you know it's Nathan, but if you look at him on PS1, you still knew it was Nathan, but they look totally different now because they've added so much. My question is, how the fuck would you even know if it's the same character in 10 years? The guy said, like, four words since we've met him. You know, yeah. you designed him and then immediately covered up his face with a fucking helmet. <laughs> I never knew who he was. Like, yeah, right. uh, yeah, sure, this is the same guy. Same guy. Yeah, I swear yeah, to God. Right. We swear, this is the same character. Definitely the same guy. I mean, now that you think about it, Briar, when you're running around in the tower and stuff, and in the reef, it almost feels like a waste of animation just to put the face on the character because it's the only time you see it. And they gave you the option to put the helmet on. In it's the just reef. insane. You don't even have to... <laughs> It's, 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 it's crazy. It's really crazy. Oh I think it's cool. It's cool. You know, like, that means, like, your inventory is probably also going to stay with you, you know. Uh, you know, that cool-ass armor that you worked your ass off for in the Iron Banner in year one, pull mm-hmm. that out in year eight and see how Holy many people shit. fucking have it, you know? Yeah, like, you'll have hey, all this stuff forever. That's going to be, check like, ten out. Yeah, it's like 10 years to buy your cool. grandkids, like, look at all this loot I got back in Destiny. It's like, yeah. <laughs> they got to open, they got to m- expand the vault space pronto so that we don't have to delete all that shit, you know? So we oh, can just pull that stuff out, like, and show off our year one goodies, you know? Like, my oh, I- Iron ago. Banner season one stuff. Like, there's already new Iron Banner stuff, but I rep the first stuff because it's fucking cool. <laughs> and I was there, man. I was there. It's like, fucking Woodstock. <laughs> Where were you when Iron Banner first was born? Yeah, Iron Banner 1.0. Shit. <laughs> so Officially I, licensed mouse and keyboard for PS4 revealed. I don't care about this. You don't. Uh, I guess everything has its place, but the thing that really threw me off is the $130 price tag. Um, yeah, the thing that really throws me off is the completely complete unbalance it's going to cause in online <laughs> multiplayer. First person, yeah, first person. Yeah, what, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who cares about the price? Who cares about, like, how good this shit is? It's going to be mouse and keyboard versus controllers uh, online. I mean, people like to talk about the whole scuff controller thing and how that's cheating. That gives you an advantage, but that's convenience. That's not unfair advantage. This... Oh, it's unfair. Be... It's unfair. <laughs> This is like the oh, next yeah. step, though. This is oh, going to be like a huge the next step. advantage. Yeah. yeah. With the things you get with a mouse controller as opposed to a controller, like a you know a handheld controller, is that you can your hand speed is your movement speed, right? Your turnaround speed. So instead of having to move the stick and wait for your character to move over, you just go whoop, and you're, yeah, you're aimed on sight shooting. You know, yeah, much more precise. I don't know if that's going to be how it works because we've seen mouse support on consoles before and it was hokey because basically moving the mouse over, just it was an analog to just moving the stick over. So you still had to wait yeah, for it to that's go what over. I'm thinking, it, was bad, I'm, I'm... it was a bad Im- implementation. But if this is real support and if this means that people are going to be playing with real mouse and keyboard support in Black Ops 3, in Destiny 2... 
they're going to have a huge advantage. Yeah. Mm. If only I could get my head around the mouse and keyboard, I just can't fucking figure we'll it out. We'll have to see how it turns out. But uh, <laughs> next set of news, Castlevania developer teases next game. So Mercury Steam, I believe they're called, is teasing their next game. It's some kind of sci-fi adventure. Looks In cool, space. but I don't know much about it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just a, a concept art of a guy inside of a cockpit. And uh, other than that, it really doesn't specify too much. I don't know if I'm excited about this at all because the Castlevania developers are the same developers that took Koji Igarashi's game and turned it to poop. So, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe they're doing something different. We'll see that. Yeah, that's that. Mafia 3 officially announced. More information will be revealed at Gamescom. Loves Mafia 2. I am super happy about this. You called this a while back, Robbie. You actually called this a few weeks ago that uh, Mafia 3 was going to be announced soon, and here we are with Mafia 3. Uh, I I think the Mafia games are pretty good. I'm anxious to see what they do to change it up, especially now with games like GTA 5. They can pull a lot of inspiration from that type of game and uh, bring it to this back in the 60s, 50s type of experience and see what we get out of it. Hopefully it's not just uh, a copy and paste of what the first two games were, and they give you a lot more options. I think more options in, the, in these open world type of games like GTA V are what make the replayability so amazing. Yeah, I love the setting. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks like it can be set in Louisiana in the 60s, so that's pretty awesome to me. Yeah. Dave, do you have anything to say about this? Or Briar, whatever, you know? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just, call him, just call him Brave. Everybody knows your name. I'm sorry. Brave. Don't call me. Uh, Fallout 4 development is basically done, according to Be- Bethesda. Good okay. news. Right? They said it was actually pretty much done when they showed it off at E3. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. They, they still are working out bugs, they said. But, yeah, keeps... uh, And hopefully they're adding a little bit more kind of extra stuff, which would be nice. But uh, I'm glad it's done beforehand. I'm glad they're not rushing it out the door. I'm glad we're not going to get a day one product that's bug to hell that needs day one patches, and then we're, we're waiting for two weeks or a month to get a patch that fixes the frame rate. This is yeah. good news. This is real good news. This doesn't happen very often where a developer has a game ready before the release date. Usually you get the gold, gold like a week or two before the actual release date, maybe a month, but these guys, Bethesda, they always make awesome games. Sometimes they come out a little iffy, you know, like uh, New Vegas did, but for the most part, their games are really, really awesome. I'm excited about this news. Yeah, and they take the time, too. Like, this game has almost been a deal for four years now. It's been four years since Skyrim came up. They've been working on it a very long time. I can't the believe game it's been is four years since Skyrim. I yeah. know! That's I know. crazy to me, too. But, yeah, yeah, the thing is, the game is done. They're polishing it now, and that's absolutely awesome. It's super close to coming out. It's definitely coming out November 10th. God, I can't wait. I mean, this is going to be game of the year. This is going to be insane. I, I can't wait for it. Game of the year. Man! It's going to be, it's gonna be a hell of a year. year. <laughs> Rocket League, that, it needs to be mentioned at least. Of course, it doesn't have depth and degrees like that, but it's it's unadulterated fucking fun. That's what Rocket League is. Ooh, this is huge news. Oh, actually, I skipped one. But let me go to... Nexon is developing a free-to-play Titanfall game for Asia called Titanfall Online. Thoughts, guys? Wii U sales passed right. 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's cool, man. I'm glad you know there's going to be Titanfall in Asia, you know, but it doesn't affect me whatsoever. Yeah, Wii U sales passed 10 million, and Splatoon hits 1.6 million. Um, I don't know how to feel, feel about that news. I mean, Wii U, they've been out for what four years? Three, 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 three and a half. Yeah, and uh, 10 million sold is really uh, underperformance for Nintendo. Yeah. This is Nintendo's uh, 1.62 million. That's yeah. that's 10 percent. That's well, it's 16 percent. Yeah. By sales data, this is Nintendo's slowest selling console ever. This is selling worse than the Dreamcast, which was considered a commercial failure. The Dreamcast, within a year, sold 10 million. This is taking two and a half years to do it. That's it's long. That's it's been really bad. Than two and a half. That's really bad. Like I'm not gonna. Say that, oh, this is positive. They hit this big landmark of 10 million. It took them way yeah, too long Splatoon, to do it. 1.6 million. That's, that's really good. good. You know, that's, that's an original good. IP from Nintendo. It's an original take on a first person shooter, I would say. I think that's awesome news. Yep. Oh, the game is so good. It really is. What do you guys think? Does the Wii U have much more 
Life Ahead of it, or is that... Oh, it's a Dead as a Door Down. They're going to yes. have a new console next year. Right. It's totally fine. That pretty much. Yeah, we know that, so... It's fucked! Ooh. This... <laughs> This is kind of exciting news for me because this is one of my favorite games of the year, and it still is one of my favorites of the year. Me too. Uh, the first major expansion for Dying Light, um, the following, has been announced. Did you guys... Ver, I know you didn't really dig Dying Light too much, did you? Not really. It wasn't my thing. It was so good. And if this is a major expansion, this is something I need to have. Uh, that's really good news for me. We played Dying Light till we, were, we fucking platinumed it. Kate and I, we were going crazy on that game. <laughs> Uh, and so anything new it would be really good for me. I'd just squeeze that blood from the turnip. I want it. Yeah, I love Dying Light. I really enjoyed the game. I put a ton of time into it. Just about did everything. This expansion they're saying is almost as big as like the base game, like in terms what? of like, the really? size and stuff. Oh, yeah, so what? it's a big expansion. I'm looking forward to it. Oh man, I have to have that. That just really awesome. You got, me, you got, you got me I mean, did an Amazing you. job. Oh my god. Ooh, this is more really exciting news. Again, we've mentioned a few times today. Rocket League has been downloaded over 5 million times. Do they split that up between PC and PS4? Yeah, no. That's that's on both platforms. Okay. That's, that's it's interesting. I bet it's heavily weighted toward the PS4 because obviously the PS4 was for free. Yeah. Yep. And so many uh, people own the console, too. I, I wonder how... Psionics feels about this, you know, like overwhelming success, but they gave it away for free, you know. They got a DLC coming. Uh, everybody I talk to who plays Rocket League is gonna buy that DLC because they're they're just they want to support Psionics, right? It's like absolutely you gave us this game for free. Now we'll support you by paying yeah. for the DLC, you know, like and I think. I think this is going to be an overwhelming success of a DLC, too. I think it's only going to be, like, $4, too, for the DLC. It's going to come with, like, two cars, a couple of new uh, arenas, one or new arena, maybe, and uh, some new stuff that you can get awarded, like hats and and uh, paint jobs and stuff like that. Let, let me I ask you think... guys a question. Do you think if they changed the arena style in DLC, that would be a good thing or a bad thing? Like, if they added uh, obstructions in the actual arena and... Tunnels and things like that. Do you guys think that would be a good thing or a bad thing in DLC? Uh, I think I don't know if it would be good necessarily. I feel like I like how open the field is, so it's just you pushing the ball into the goal and clashing with the other cars. I feel like if there's too many obstructions in the way, it would kind of ruin that chaos. So if you asked me day one, BC, I would have said, "Yeah, like let's make we've got pool now. Let's get bumper pool." You know. <laughs> 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 but now that I've played it for a while. Like I don't know. It's like it's a. It feels like a sport, and sports have, you know, fields that are the exact same. You know, yeah. With the exception of maybe baseball. <laughs> I don't think it would work at all. I honestly don't. And I feel like it could work maybe as like a side mode. You know, yeah. But with tunnels I, I do and like loops having like kind of like a normal. Like you know how that ball is gonna bounce if you hit it against the edge. You know how to. You know that if you're in the corner, you know how to bounce that ball to center it. You know, like. Mm -hmm. If you mess that up between different arenas, you know, then you're going to have to learn those arenas and you have to remember exactly how to do that for each one. I don't know. Maybe. Mm, okay. I think well, in general this is awesome news, though. I mean, this game caught, like, wildfire, especially because it was free on PlayStation Plus. Like, I can tell you guys right now, I would have never given this game a shot for $20. No, I would have just I completely either. overlooked it. I would have been like, no, nah, probably not that fun. Even if all my friends were telling me they loved it, I would have been like, dude, it's fucking car soccer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would have been like, not for me. But the fact that it's free, it got to so many people, everybody got to play it, and now it's going to be incredibly successful from here on out. Yeah. But, but the scary thought is, how many games have we passed on that are actually pay-to-play? None. That might, Zero. might actually be good. Zero games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. All right. <laughs> This is other really big news this week that a lot of people have been talking about. I actually made a video about it. Sony Financials revealed lifetime sales of 25.3 million PS4 sold. That's in, wow. That, that is in a very short period of time, 25 million PS4 sold. And they're looking at a two-year fiscal year. Uh, and it took the PS2 two years and eight months to hit 20 million. So... <laughs> This is the fastest selling console in history. Of all so time. It's, it's destroying it. I mean, well, they just 
Sony's the momentum. They can't stop. They just nothing will stop them. So they what's this mean to us? The like great. I'm glad Sony's having big success. But what's this mean for gamers? What's this mean for us? Well, well, I, I look at it a couple of ways. See, Sony. A lot of people see Sony's PlayStation brand as a huge success, but it's kind of easy to to overlook the fact that every other aspect of the company is failing. Their TVs, yes. their phones are failing. Uh, their computers are gone. Uh, and every other avenue of income that the company has tried to generate has been pretty much a huge failure. PlayStation is Sony's dominant financial form at this point. And so with me looking at it that way, I'm hoping that someone in the position of control and power at the company starts to pool all those other resources and make Sony just a video game company and, and make really? better hardware. I, I would like to see wow. that. Oh, I, 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 think that I, I don't think, think I could disagree with you more. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have to agree with uh, Briar on this. I let don't me hear, let me hear your, your thoughts on it. And, and so we'll see the, the, the thing that scares me about that is I don't, I don't care about Sony. Okay, like I don't I don't really care if Sony has <laughs> bright financial feature or not. Right? It doesn't really affect my life. I'd like to see them make a PlayStation Five and Six, uh, and if they're just a game co- company, uh, I think that that is more at risk than they if they are a multi-faceted company, right? If Yeah. Yeah, okay, so TVs are doing bad right now. Stereo sales aren't doing well. They, they I think they're doing well in some areas. Uh, I didn't read their whole financial report. I, like you guys, just saw the, the PS4 headline. But if they become a solely video game company, what if the PlayStation 5 sucks? Yeah, well, and that's the only six. division they have. And it fails, they're then, done. Then, then they'd be like Nintendo. Um, or that, would they be like Nintendo or like Sega? I I, I would like to think more like Nintendo. Uh, especially they don't have first-party software like Nintendo does. They don't. Yeah. They, yeah, they don't buy have... Wii's because Nintendo first-party software. Would you yeah. buy a PS4 for Sony first-party software? Well, the thing is I this. Would. The thing is, this Briar, they're pretty much doing that right now anyway. It's like YouTube. You have the Briar, you're the Briar Rabbit. If you start, I am the Briar Rabbit, and yes, I like to party. You are. <laughs> that, that's the ta- <laughs> that's the catchphrase. Now, if you had another YouTube channel that was teaching people how to play the piano, mm-hmm. and did it for a long time, and it it didn't generate any views, didn't generate any income, and you continue, and you tried other channels, and none of them ever worked, and Briar Rabbit was a channel that constantly got more views, constantly got new subscribers, you would pull all your efforts into Briar Rabbit's channel, which, of course, is what you do. Uh, and I think that Sony's already shown that their other avenues have failed. The other things that they've tried to do have all failed. There's nothing else besides PlayStation that they're doing right now that's generating uh, positive overhead for the company. I, I don't else, think that's true. Yeah, there are some in-betweens that are looking positive for them, but for the most part, PlayStation... Well, they, their big well, stuff... Like TVs are rough on everybody right now, right? You know, because the nobody wants to buy a three thousand dollar TV. That's where you make profits on TV. Everybody's buying, you know, eleven hundred dollar Vizio TVs. Yeah. So yep. that's tough. That's a tough business to be in. But if you want a good TV, you still buy a three thousand dollar TV. Stereo is kind of the same TVs. way. But yeah. Sony's making hay with things like headphones. Speakers, you know, there's there's other things that Sony's got its hands in that are making them a lot of money. It's just that there's headlines like the computer, the the BIOS went away. The phones. TVs are just a bad market right now, but TVs will come around again. I think once 4K content comes out, like once 4K content becomes a doable thing, I think there will be another resurgence in TV sales, and I think it'd be silly for Sony to abandon that market. But Sony is, is drastically overpriced, even compared to other companies like LG and Sharp. Like, if you were to go inside a Best Buy right now and you look at those televisions, Sony, they usually have an overpriced product that does mediocre or moderate as far as the uh, ability of the television. You can usually get Three years that... ago, I agree with you. Now, I think it might be a little different. Mm, okay. Maybe I need to go back and look. I, th- I think Sony it's, it's been has a year learned that, that they're years. not the premium brand that they were in the 80s and 90s, and it yeah. took them a while to figure that out, like all, basically all the 20 aughts, and now they're kind of figuring that out, is that if we're going to charge 30% more for a TV, it's got to be 50% better. TV. Yeah, okay. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be, the value, you know, the Sony Trinitron brand was it's so awesome. big because yeah. TVs were 
better than everybody else's TV. They and sure charge more for them, and they, they continue to charge more for them with the flat screen TVs, which were not necessarily better than anybody else's TV. Yeah, but I think they've they learned the error of their ways. Well, I might be wrong. You know, I was taking a look at Sony's financial report, and they did talk about all these negative discrepancies, and mm -hmm. they mentioned the, the phones that they were not doing well, and they were cutting back on, I think, all but three of the Sony phones. Yeah. Uh, and so it looked like a really daunting situation for me. And so if I put myself in that situation, what would I do? I would go for whatever's bringing in the money. And, of course, I, I didn't think about the speakers and the headphones. They That is hay. That's a little extra cream on the top. Uh, but PlayStation is, is a phenomenon right now. It is right it's, now, but will yeah. it be in five years? Will it be in ten years? Put yeah. all your eggs in one basket. You know, if the basket breaks, you're fucked. <laughs> That's what, it means to say that every time people say you put all your eggs in one all right. Uh, questions? Are we on to questions? Not yet. We still got. All right, let, let me tease the questions one more time so we have questions when we're ready for them. All right. All right. Okay. In the comments, put your questions to us. We'll be answering questions at the end of the show. So put your questions in the comments. Yeah, we want to hear from you. <laughs> God damn it! Don't put all your questions in one basket. No. <laughs> or you'll be. Or a break. If this basket breaks, you're fucked. You'll be all right, fixed. so. A game that I'm actually pretty damn excited about. I don't know about you guys, but I want to find out. Until Dawn has gone gold. The game is ready for release on August 25th. This game stars Hayden Pentier, the cheerleader from um, Heroes. And, uh, it, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I haven't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> yeah. That was the only thing that I thought she was good in. But uh, it's kind of like this cabin in the wood type situation, and you're actually controlling her. And it, it's it's one of those games that's really similar to like Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain. Oh, okay. Yes. But it's it's moving in that direction, but it appears to be more hands-on than you just watching a movie. And uh, the scenes that I've seen actually did look really entertaining. I love horror. That's my favorite genre of anything. Uh, if I could have like a horror birthday cake, I would. I love horror, so I'm excited about it. The game. I could make you a horrible birthday cake. I didn't say horrible. I said horror. Okay. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> oh my bad. Yeah, but I'm excited about this game. What do you guys think about it? Is it something you might take a look at? I think Until Dawn looks really good, but I think it's more of a forty dollar game. I don't know if I would buy this full price because it's not exactly like a triple A exclusive. Like people aren't going to go buy PS4s for it. But I think it's a really cool game to come out in August, just before like the big fall hits. I think this is a really good timing for this release. I think it looks awesome. I think it'll be fun to play with friends, and I'm looking forward to it, though. Mr. Sure. I agree with Robbie completely, 100%. That's right. That's right. Saying whatever he said, Dad. <laughs> he doesn't have to say anything else. Story. Go with what Robbie said. <laughs> what? Uh, Briar, why don't you go to the with the next story about Drive Club? Because this completely caught me off guard. I'm surprised about this because. Uh, I, I don't really know what this game is. Drive Club sales surpassed 2 million worldwide. Is what this the, the one that was so shitty yes. when it launched? The one yeah, that, that nobody got, yeah. Are they including the, because they released like the PlayStation Plus version, version, right? So yep. did they include that yep. in there? It says sales. Drive Club sales surpassed 2 million worldwide. Hmm. Now, That's I, the I, game. I will say that the game is a really, really nice uh, racing sim. It's, I'm not big into racing, but I mean, I played the game, I looked at the game, I, I, I felt the cars. It's awesome. I'm just not into that type of game. But two million, that's a wow. They may have saved their uh, their, their studio with that that's kind a big of number. number. They may have just saved their studio somehow. Yeah, I mean, I played the PlayStation Plus version. I thought it was good. I mean, it came out way too late when I didn't really care about it, but it wasn't really for me. Uh, I don't know, but it's a good racing game, so. Yeah. This is one of those names that just kind of comes up every couple of weeks or so in this podcast, and I'm always like, uh, just drive club again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says that. What, what is even is that game? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's good news. I mean, I'm happy to hear it. That studio was under fire for a long time. Shuhei Yoshida himself had to come out and apologize for that game. Okay. So, I mean, if, it was if bad. If something like that happens, pretty much you can close your doors or at least get ready to. So if they sold two million worldwide, that at least shines a ray of hope on the studio. If they can stay alive and not fuck up so bad next time, I hope they they stay around. Honestly, 
All right, so the last little bit of news that we got, guys, and this is actually something I'm, I really want to know what you guys think about it. Sony confirm, confirms a vote to play feature is coming to PlayStation Plus. Uh, and this yes. feature will allow you to vote for the PlayStation Plus games that you will be able to get for free and get discounts on on a monthly basis. What do you guys think about that? Do you think it could work? I really like this for the most part. I've seen people saying that, oh, people are just going to vote for all the shitty games or all the new releases. Like, I guess people are more uninformed and don't know about these games that are going to vote for random stuff and then the free game isn't going to be that great. But I think for the most part, this gives consumer freedom and choice and PlayStation Plus is already an amazing value, an incredible service, and I think for the most part this is a positive thing. But I can see how there's some negatives to it, but I'm generally happy about this, I think. Well, my thing is this. I, I was looking at it from the opposite paradigm where people are only going to pick the newest games. Or the most the popular games. Just, yeah, the ones that just came out uh, and, and everybody writes down, you know, I want Fallout 4. I mean, what happens if everybody votes? Or will they have a list of games that you can vote from? That seems more reasonable. Do they have maybe a they list? They will have maybe, a list, yeah. Yeah, yeah there will be a list. A list of maybe 20, 20 uh, games that you can choose from because if they just give us carte blanche to vote for whatever we want, it's going to go haywire, and they're going to end this real quick. Well, I think think what's going to happen, Beastly, is that there's going to be... They'll give us a list of, like, three or four games, and then, like, one of those games will be uh, in addition to the other games that were already slated by PlayStation. So it's not going to be only user-submitted... Not user-submitted, but only... It's not going to be only voted on ones, but there will be a vote to make people feel more... I think it's a gimmick, to be honest with you. I think it's... A gimmick to make people feel like they have a say in the process, but they really don't. You think so? Because uh, I, from what I know, this is going to be like purely the PlayStation Plus game of the month is going to be what you vote on, and then the runner-ups are going to be discounted. But you never know. Yeah, maybe I could be wrong about that. So I don't know. Either way, I think it's cool. Well, yeah, I, I guess we we'll have to wait and see. It's the first time anything like this has been done, so I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens after the first month, the first two months. Now, something that we don't actually have in our news, but I want to talk to you guys about was my man Phil Spencer, the man, the myth, Xbox, head of Xbox. A beautiful he, man. Oh. He, he's, a, he's a lovely gent, yes. Uh, he uh, did an interview, and I'm trying to remember who he did the interview with. I think it was GameCore uh, overseas. And uh, when he was asked about these console-exclusive deals, they were actually referring to Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, what he thought of this new way of uh, getting games on, his, on the consoles and he actually said that don't expect this to continue with the Xbox. Now, mm. games that are console exclusive like Street Fighter V, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Destiny has PlayStation exclusive uh, access, games like Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 3 on PlayStation. He said that uh, in the future he does not want to continue to pay for exclusivity with developers. He said he'd rather work with uh, third-party developers to develop better relationships and work on their own first-party games rather than continue this trend. Now, yeah. that sounds that sounds really good, right? And and this actually goes in the opposite direction of what I was thinking. I was thinking we would see this persist because it's been ramping up. As you guys see, Sony and Microsoft have just been going apeshit to, to procure, um, you know, these exclusive rights and deals. But Spencer says no, and I'm wondering if he's just saying this to get Sony to lower their defenses so they can go get more games like they did with Tomb Raider. Do you guys think that he's telling the truth? Do you think that uh, Microsoft and Sony need to kind of back away from these kind of deals? Now, Tomb Raider, of course, is a year exclusivity. That's the longest I've ever seen. That's very Uh, long. That's the longest I've ever heard of. That's preposterous. But for Microsoft, that's a great deal, honestly. Um, And I I would think that after something like that, that Phil Spencer would probably be more likely to, you know... um, affirm this kind of action in the future, but it seems like in his, at least in his interview, he said, no, not anymore. You guys have any thoughts on that? I don't understand how he can stop doing it, to be honest with you. Like, they don't have a first party, so the the only first party they have anymore is Bungie, right? Or Halo. Sorry, not Bungie. Like, what else do they have? I think that's a really good point, Briar, because to buy an Xbox. Yeah, because I think that's a really great point, Briar, because you look at Sony, they have all these first-party studios that make exclusives for them, and we don't even know what a lot of them are doing. They're developing games that haven't even been announced. 
Microsoft has some first parties, like 343, and... Uh, you got a new Gears of War project. Yeah, and Black Tusk and all that, but they don't have the first party lineup like Sony does, and so they have to buy these third party exclusives from these different developers like Rise of the Tomb Raider, even if it is timed. I really don't like these third party exclusives that are especially timed like Rise of the Tomb Raider. I think it's incredibly silly because would I buy that game? Like, would I buy an Xbox One for that game if I didn't have one? No, of course not. No, like, but if there's, was, there's 10 of those, you know, then it starts to make an argument. One of them, yeah. not a big argument. 10 of them, yes. big argument. Yeah. I think it stacks if you have several of them, but I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of third-party time stuff. So. It's like the trend. I mean, it's what's happening now. Sony immediately jumped on Call of Duty as soon as their uh, contract was up with, my, with Microsoft. It was a Sony rep, like, inside Activision's office, like, hey, look, your contract <laughs> We're waiting at the door. <laughs> five minutes ago. We need to talk to you right now. So I don't think it's going to end, and even if Phil Spencer believes it is on Microsoft's front, look what Sony's doing. They're going to continue it. It's all about vying for the interest of the gamer, and um, I just didn't believe him when he said that. And so I'm happy to hear that you guys kind of don't believe that either. Right. It's not that I don't believe it. I just think it's an unwise decision. Yeah. Especially when your competition is going to continue to do it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, you know they are, right? Like, it's it's good business practices. It's like getting into a fight with somebody, and you kick them in the balls, and they kick you in the balls. Then you look at the audience or the referee and say, I'm not going to kick them in the balls anymore. It's, it's unethical. You get kicked in the balls again. You <laughs> yeah, you just let him kick in the balls again. Yeah. You know, it's one of those situations. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Unless they're like really renewing their efforts on first-party software. I mean, they used to. Microsoft used to have a strong first party. You know, you think about some of the stuff that came out, especially on the original Xbox, and even in the early days of the 360. There was a ton of yeah, a ton of exclusives. Yep. Really cool ones. And and they all just but they just disappear. Died. You know, there's still some of them. Four is that I got mentioned enough in the uh, comments, but I can't think of many that are still active. And even Gears of War, it's like, is that really the same as it used to be? Probably not. It's probably not the same well, levity. I mean, it's even by a brand new studio who's never made Gears of War, so who knows? It could be got, it's just amazing or terrible. Put a name on something. They've got Fable. They've got Crackdown. Fable. Right? When's the last time Fable was good? Crackdown too <laughs> sucked. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say anything about being good. I'm just telling you. The yeah, but I mean, it, it goes to show, like, if they're not buying exclusives, what the fuck do they have? So what do you think? Halo they Five they is a big to... exclusive. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, that'll be big. But yeah, I mean, other than that, what else, other than maybe Gears, Forza, for the people who really love those games, there's not really a lot for me as a gamer that's super exciting about their first parties. They need to just restructure and get get on the ball with creativity, man. That's really what they need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to hire people like um, Miyamoto. You know, they need to hire people with, with just open minds to create. You know, people like the guys, Quantic Dream, they make games that are just out there and insane. So they yeah. had that, though, and they just abandoned it, you know? Like, what was that game? Crimson Skies was a yeah. big one. Fable was huge. You know, like, there's so many of those games that were coming out for the original Xbox and early in the 360 life. Yeah. But they just, you know, they they either disbanded or let go those studios. And now, I, you know, it's, it's hard to even think of anything besides 343 that's really an exciting property coming out of Microsoft. When's the last time you played your Xbox One, Brian? Uh, I don't know, a day ago, two days ago. What were you playing, Destiny? Yeah. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> or <laughs> in the Pokemon Forest. Forest. I keep meaning to go back to it, too. Yeah, I just can't. a wonderful game. Oh, man, I time. like Red Dead Rocket League. Oh, I didn't even tell you about Agario, too. That game fucking hooked its nasty little claws into me hardcore. Which one? Agar... Agar.io, Agario, Agar. The block game. Yeah, the, on PC. the block game. It's awful. Wow. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, bro. You love I it. Just love it. <laughs> you know you love it. Mindless, stupid fun. So, uh, what do you guys got going on this week on your channels? Uh, I'm doing a little Destiny, surprisingly enough. I really? can't believe it. I can't believe it. Got a Shardered or Keep It series. I actually started working on or I got the Shardered or Keep It for tomorrow that I actually started working on today. Love that series. What about you, Mr. Robbie Skull? 
All right, so this week I am so excited to you guys to announce that I have a brand new series coming to my channel. This is going to be a weekly thing. It's going to start out with Destiny and then move on to other first-person shooters like when Halo 5 comes out, especially Black Ops 3. I am going to be doing a weapon challenge series in the Crucible where I do things like No Land Beyond, Sensitivity Challenge, Melee Only. Yes. What? I'm yes. coming up with all kinds of crazy ideas for a Crucible. I'm going to be really challenging myself. It's going to be a ton of fun. All right, so I you. here's what I want to know. What are the stakes? So you're challenging yourself. Is there a reward if you succeed and a penalty if you fail? I'm still kind of thinking that out, but I think, I think if, you, probably... if, if you are successful, you should give yourself, like, an ice cream. And if you <laughs> fail, you should give each one of your subscribers $10. Well, damn, son. <laughs> what, kind of, what? Where do you come up with that? I think it's a strong idea. Ask your subs. I bet they'll think it's a good idea, too. Oh, yeah, they will. Of course they will. Listen to your subscribers, Robbie. I'm a subscriber. I think it's a good idea. That's crazy. But yeah, I'm super excited. The first episode should be up either tomorrow or Tuesday. Probably tomorrow. So hey, look forward let, to let it. Let me just put myself out there, Robbie. If you want to try this with someone you know who, who will go with the same moveset, whatever you're trying to do, I'll do it with you. I'm down, too. Any Robbie. of these crazy fucking things, melee only, the three of us get in there and just do nothing but melee. We gotta stay together though, because we gotta hit people more than once, like immediately. So, I'm down. That sounds really awesome, man. That's a great, great idea for your channel. I'm, I'm down. I, I can't wait to watch it. So hit me up. Too. I can't wait to get my ten bucks. I'm subscribed, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out my channel down in the description. Oh, and man. Be Thank you all so much for watching today. I wanted to quickly say that the last episode of BC Thoughts, episode 77, we got over 2,000 views on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your support is awesome. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you all yeah. so much. All right, guys. So I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to go light a fire. <laughs> oh, He's okay. going to the bathroom. All right.